With the recent update of Source Film Maker, Valve finally added a feature to SFM that we've been wanting since the beginning. The ability to rescale models, to change their size. It's been the bane of our existence. You always come across models that are too big or too small, and you can never really do with them what you want to do with them. So with this update, now we finally have that ability. It's the easiest thing to do, but people have still been asking what it is and how to use it. So if you just want to rescale an entire model, you just right click on it, go to utilities, and add scale to control the models. Then it'll add a root transform scale to it. So you can resize it however you want. And you can scale individual bones as well. Like I did recently for this little video. And how you do that, you just find the bone that you want to change the scale of, right click, add scale control, and then adjust it however you want. And you can do more elaborate stuff like this, or you can do more subtle animations. It's fully animatable. Like I did with Derpy here. So I hope you can see it here, where I just altered the scale a little bit of a couple bones in her chest and her arms and neck. And it makes it look like she's breathing. Another thing you can do with it is if you have a model that you need to adjust its proportions to fit whatever story or idea that you have, then you can do that as well. Like I have Little Pip and Velvet Remedy here from Fallout Equestria. In the story, Little Pip is smaller than everybody else. She's supposed to be nearly kid size. So I adjusted her size, and I also adjusted the scale for the necks on both models to make the proportions a little better. And you can see the difference if you look at the originals. You see that little pips are at least half the size and the heads on both are a little smaller scale. Just to give a little tweak to the proportions. The amount of stuff that you can do with it is pretty vast. There are limitations though that you need to keep in mind. One thing I found one doing this video and I've heard reports from other people as well. Now this little Applejack model here I didn't alter this beyond adding a scale to it and then applying a rig. The scale feature does not like rigs at all. If you try to use a universal scale or root transform scale and apply a rig then it deforms like this. And if you try to remove a rig then it deforms even more. So your best option with this, there, there really isn't much that you can do about it. Maybe do your animations first, then try to apply a scale afterward. And it mainly does this when you're talking about scaling the entire model with a root transform. If you just do individual bones, you might be able to get away with 
animating first, then scaling. But right now, there isn't too much that you can do. Another feature, another issue, and I'll spawn a model here. Another issue is that they cause jiggle bones to freak out. Now, if you're not using pony models, chances are you won't have that much of a problem. Because all the, the pony character models, they have jiggle bones in the hair and the tail. So adding a transform, adding a scale transform, can cause them to wig out, so to speak. Like that. And there's no way to fix it except to go back and remove it completely. There is a way to get around it, and that's to bake procedural bones first. If you bake the procedural bones, then, then you can add the scale and it won't be much of an issue. Generally speaking, you shouldn't have a problem with it on most models. TF2, Half-Life, static props especially. Anything that doesn't have a jiggle bone, then you should be okay. And your best bet with this is, like with the rig, do the animations first, let the the bones settle how they will. Then bake the procedural bones and add the transform scale afterward. I've tried to bake the procedural bones, add the scale, and then re-enable them. Because we have that feature now too. But that didn't work either. So it's something to keep in mind. And the other issue is that it transforms them uniformly. Whatever bone, whatever bones are attached to the one that you're trying to change also gets changed. Like I'll show you with her shoulder here. Add scale to the shoulder. You see when I change the shoulder, then the entire arm changes. So if you just wanted to do the shoulder, then you would have to adjust the others to compensate for it. But little, little quirks aside, it is probably the best tool that they've ever added to SFM. I've gotten the most use out of it out of anything. There are so many little, little things that you can do, little tweaks that you can do to your scene using this tool that it, it outweighs any of the problems. And hopefully, hopefully Valve fixes it. But if not, it, it's not that big of a problem. We may find uh, ways around it, or maybe a script will come out to address some of the issues. But for right now, it's a pretty good tool. And I hope you found this useful, and hope you get some ideas out of it.